never get more real than this, and I'll get very personal right here. When I met Marcy, she was 19 years old. I was 20 years of age when I proposed to her. We dated for four and a half years. On the very night I proposed to her, my very first statement to her was this, this is my token for you. This is my promise. We are not going to engage intimately until the day we exchange our vows. We were in the university away from our parents. The opportunities were many and immense. And I went further and I told Mercy this, if I ever cross that boundary and that commitment, then you don't have a reason to ever trust me as long as I live. I can look at you straight in your eye and tell you I kept that promise four and a half years later. These things work. They are real. The main sex organ is in the mind. Affairs don't start on the bed. They start in the head. Common choice number three. Career choices. Are you learning something? Career choices. Often than not, when we hear about career choices, we jump at conclusions. This is high school stuff. Yet far too many adults I meet, they're in careers they don't like. They are pursuing different courses that are incongruent with their purpose in life. They don't align to a common purpose. Social media-based recruitment agency, staffbait.com, conducted a survey last year, 2015. And they concluded that 87% of all the respondents, 15,000 of them, in other words, this was a scientific survey. So let me put it in the right words. 15% of all employees, sorry, 87% of all employees don't like their jobs. And 25% of them indicated that their job is their number one stress factor. I ask you tonight to check whether this data is authentic by re-examining your life. If you were guaranteed of a regular income, would you go back to that office on Monday morning? Do you really love what you do? Would you do it for no pay? Do you live from paycheck to paycheck? With many years behind you but nothing to show for the toil and the effort. Is your job in the top three list leading causes of stress in your life? Given a second chance, would you jump that ship where you are to another job? This is not a topic we can give justice on this platform. And this is the reason I decided on 7th of December, I'm going to conduct something called the 7 C Woman from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. You're gonna pay the price for it, 20,000 shillings. But of course you have a choice to make, to mop and stumble through life broke and confused, or to pay the price to discover your purpose in life. What in sense on one life club we call your tree. When we decided you are going to go for the Nile cruise, we got about 20 of you responding, and you are going to take this team in April. We closed the door. Some of you wrote to me and said, that's a bit expensive for us. I decided to respond to that, and I have answered it. But complainers will still complain anyway. The Nile cruise is 170,000, so I brought it near home for a one-day crash program for 20,000 shillings. Now, I will do something phenomenal that I had not planned to do. For any of you who cannot afford to go to the Nile Cruise, and you do want to come for the 7 C conference, this is for women only, the male version will be a new year release. I'll give you a chance for this evening only. Whoever you have to call, you call. Because I'll only give you a chance to pay 75%, that's 15,000, for only this evening only. That includes your teas and your lunches. And I want to take you through your life purpose. Stop wasting time trying to find out who you are when the help is near you. But for the benefit of those who may never return to this meeting, let me just throw some four suggestions about discovering your purpose. Number one, find out your talents, giftings, and natural inclinations. 
Our maker in his own wisdom decided to hide our purpose within our natural talents, giftings, and natural inclinations. That is why the cat family was created with paws and claws to help them hunt. Number two, identify your passions. Where do they lie? Your natural interests. You know, I have a precious friend of mine. She is in this auditorium tonight. Her name is Felistas. She's the proud owner of St. Bakita Group of Schools. She's doing exceptionally well. Look for her after this meeting. I have sat with her on several occasions, and I can tell you one reason. And I know some of you are parents of St. Bakita. How many here are parents of St. Bakita? Your child in St. Bakita? Any of you? All right, I can't see. One of the reasons Ferista has been so successful is because of her passion for children. It's real. It's in her. I'm asking you, where are your passions? Number three, talk with your close friends. There are times Dennis calls me for coffee. And he just wants me to help him process who he is. But as you look for these guys, be absolutely convinced they're in your best interest. Don't just talk with anyone because the overwhelming majority of people are for your downfall. If you attended the seminar on leadership, if you didn't look for my DVDs, I talked about three types of people. And I say less than 5% are confident. People you can trust, they can take a bullet on your behalf. Number four, the best way to know your purpose in life is your inner witness. How many of you have quiet moments, soul-searching, seeking to find your purpose from your creator? Because no one really knows who you are, except your maker, and he doesn't need a mediator between you and him. The challenge with the overwhelming majority of people, they live amidst noise. They never take a moment. I can tell you, today only, today only, I've spent about five hours of quiet time. How many times do you take those moments to reflect? You see, it is the major decisions that we make that set our direction. But it's the small decisions that take us to our destination. Who knows what could become of you? if you just made more of the right choices along the way. Common choice number four, money, money. You know, everybody does something about money, but we don't like being close examined about how we spend money. One guy made a lot of money and he was being interviewed how he spent his money. His name is George Best. He said, you know, I spent my money on booze and birds and women and fast cars and then the rest I squandered." Are you a squadron? Money decisions are made daily. Every single day you make money decisions. You are seated here because you made a money decision. You thought this meeting has more value than 1,000 shillings. That's why you came. Does that make sense? I want to suggest some four things to consider while making money decisions. Number one, number one, God is the source of all wealth. And if God is spirit and is the source of all wealth, then I put it to you tonight, every financial decision is a spiritual decision. You've got to be good stewards of what he has given you for him to entrust you with the next level. Never put your focus on the blessings. They've got to remain on the blesser. But then you've got to know what he thinks about wealth. And I have closely checked the scriptures very closely. And I can conclude in just one minute and tell you this. It is in the interest of our maker for you to prosper. 
that they may have life and have it more abundantly. You are never created to live sufficiently. You are created to live abundantly. Poverty is caused by many factors, but the leading factor and the leading cause of poverty is poverty mentality. And of course, the second closest cousin to that is associating people with poverty mentality. Thirdly, never discovering your purpose in life. Fourthly, lack of focus, scattering and spreading yourself too thin. You are not laser focused, so you cannot achieve anything much in life. And of course, fifthly, trying to look for shortcuts to the top. If you follow the Lord's principles, one out of one, you will prosper. It is his desire for his children to prosper. I say it clearly. Poverty is from hell. The second thing to consider. Don't buy something because it is cheap. Buy something because you need it. There are people here when they are walking by. What's wrong with you? Buy something because you need it, not because it is cheap. Why cheapen yourself? Why do you want to sell yourself below your bread? Why do you want to operate below your maker's design? Don't operate below your privileges. Buy what you need, not because it is cheap. Number three. Money doesn't define you. How much you have or how much you lack will never define who you are. If you're going to buy what I've just said, then you should never buy anything to make impressions because those things never define you. There's nothing you wear that gives you value. There is nothing you drive that gives you significance. Your worth is not your net worth. Your value is not your valuables. You are priceless. You cannot be purchased with silver and gold. If you attach your value to your valuables, whenever your valuables get shaken, then your value gets shaken. Your value must be attached to timeless truths. You are God's child, precious in his sight. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Money doesn't define you. Don't buy things trying to get value out of them. A lot of Kenyans try to be defined by their cars, their neighborhoods, the clothes they wear. These things don't give you significance. It is important to groom. It is good to put your best foot forward. But your value must be inside of you because someone can steal your clothes. Someone can auction your house. Someone can mortgage away everything you have. If you attach your value to material things, then your value will always be a factor of your prosperity. Number four, fulfillment in life is not a factor of how much you have but pursuit of purpose. Fulfillment in life is not a factor of how much you have, but pursuit of purpose. Success, therefore, is not something that we pursue, but something that we attract. Anyone who makes money at the expense of his conscience is a failure. Anyone who makes money at the expense of raising his children at the expense of his family, is a failure. Refuse to believe that the aid justifies the means. The means is as important as the aid. Success is not a destination, it is a journey. You don't need to tell me where your values are. I just need to check your budget and I can tell where your values are. This is not my own discovery. I'm just paraphrasing my master who said, where your heart is, or rather where your treasure is, there your heart is also. You see, money should not be served. Money should be mastered. Money is just a tool. Money is a vehicle, can take you wherever you want, but it should not replace you as the driver. 
Every so often, check yourself that you don't lose what money cannot buy. There's nothing more tragic to men than a sudden change of fortune. In reality, though, money doesn't change people. Money reveals people. Money reveals who you are. Money reveals the inside state and condition of your heart. Rule over your money. Master your money. And this takes me to the fourth part of our discussion tonight. And the last one. The power of choice. The power of choice. I read of a story of a pastor in church who made an announcement that whoever is going to give the most for a building project that the church was undertaking will be given an opportunity to choose three hymns. To the surprise of the pastor, the entire church, it is an elderly lady who gave the most, precisely $1,000. So the pastor requested her to stand up and choose the three hymns. She calmly stood up and said, I choose him and him and him. <laughs> you know, whatever you choose to think plays out in your life. The greatest principle of growth lies in human choice. Choice gives us freedom. Choice gives us options. Choice gives us the ability to create whatever we desire. Choice is like a paintbrush. We are the artists. With choice, you can paint your masterpiece as you so desire. Without choice, we are prisoners. Without choice, we are puppets. Without choice, we are victims. In reality, we are not victims of anything except our own choices. Without choice, we have no hope, we have no dreams, we have no vision. But I've got some good news for you tonight. I'm a, I'm a merchant of hope. And I just want to tell you that there is some power in your hands. The power to choose. And I want to share with you four things that you have the power to choose. Number one, you have the power to choose your thoughts. You have the power to choose your thoughts. No doubt in my mind, the overwhelming majority of you have come across this write-up that suggests watch your thoughts. They become your words. Watch your words. They become your actions. Watch your actions. They become your habits. Watch your habits. They become your character. Watch your character. It becomes your destiny. Deductively then, your thoughts become your destiny. You are a product of your thoughts. You are your mind. I need this to sink. Please look at me. I know you're writing good news. For one moment, just look at me. You don't have a mind. You are your mind. We are created in the image of God. What does that mean? Man is body, spirit, and mind. This body carries me, me, my mind. The spirit is the breath of God that made me a living soul. If you don't buy this, you're going to struggle making decisions in this life. See, over the years, medical science has helped us to transplant anything from kidney to intestines to the liver. Amazingly enough, including the heart. We are doing heart transplants these days. Never once did any single doctor conduct a mind transplant. If they did that, it would end up with a different person 
altogether. Because you don't have a mind, you are your mind. Don't confuse your mind with your brain. You are your mind. You are a product of your mind. Whatever fills your mind, fills your life. Your life is an overflow of your thoughts. You can change your clothes. You can change your residence. You can change your job. You can do a plastic surgery and change the color of your skin. You can even change your spouse. But if you don't change your mind, you'll never change your world because you never changed your inside. You can't change the fruit without changing the roots. If you are buying that, then I suggest to you, manage your mind and you have managed your life. Whatever fills your mind, fills your life. The eyes are the windows of the soul. Whatever you watch and whatever you hear is what guides your thought system. Most of you listening to me here, what you think are your ideas are not your ideas. You have just picked them from social media, from TV, from radio, from magazines. And you hold them so closely to your chest. Not realizing these are other people's ideas. And if that is you, you have lost your freedom as a free person. You are no longer the boss of your mind. You need to regain yourself. You've got to control which channels you watch, which songs you listen. Rock music, for example, advocates many things, among them suicide and murder and hopelessness. And I hear people singing those songs. I get into a restaurant, I hear those things, and you can be sure if I come there and I hear such music, I'll be bold enough to tell you to switch it off. We are good in switching on to local FMs to input our minds with the negativities. One of the reasons we are recording DVDs is so that in the car during traffic hours, you can have positive mental inputs. You've got to be keen with what you see. Every thought from a metaphysical point of view is patterned in the same manner or